Hey everybody, it's Big E. Welcome to Big E's Auto. Yes, it's dark. Yes, it's late. Yes, I got a light on top of my head. So you know I'm putting in some hours, but I got some great news. I wanted to share a video with you guys on some complications I ran into with the EFI swap on the VET. So I'm going to go over some trouble points that turned my supposedly afternoon project into a six-week frustration fest. So here we go. So I'm going to turn my light on here for you guys. So, the first thing I wish I would have known was that the, if I would have known this to begin with, I'm going to start in the back of the car. If I would have known to begin with that the previous owner had swapped out the fuel pump to a low pressure for the carburetor, I probably wouldn't have had to do everything I did up front, but he didn't tell me that. So anyway, guys, if you're going to do this swap, make sure that the pump that you have and these are nice because you just undo these bolts here and this thing pulls right out and you can switch the pump out. He had a 10 PSI um, carburetor pump on here. So luckily he still had a new fuel injection pump that the previous owner just gave me. So shout out to him. So I, I uh, swapped out the pump for a high pressure pump. That was the last thing until I figured out everything else. Anyway, so that's... Um, make sure when you do the EFI swap you have a high pressure fuel pump that's for fuel injection okay because these systems they want to operate on the low side like 50 55 psi so make sure you have that okay now I'm gonna go to the front of the car um, obviously yes now there's an air cleaner on and the reason I wanted that was because in case it backfires you have that to, uh, you know um arrest the flame so you don't light air torch everything so anyway um this so i put a um uh external adjustable fuel pump i mean fuel regulate pressure regulator on okay so what you're going to do on the back of these it's hard to see in there where the you see where my return line goes on there's four torx bit screws in there so you're going to take that line off you're going to take in fact there's one screw right there that you take out there's uh internal regulator already in these units you don't have to swap it out if your fuel pump that's in the tank is enough pressure you don't need to mess with that but because i didn't know that and i put an external one on if you're going to run an external adjustable fuel pressure regulator you have to remove that regulator out of the unit itself but if you have the correct fuel pump in your tank leave that in you don't have to do this because you can see i had to plumb all that plumb my return um and then over here we did or i should say i did i plumbed in a fuel pressure gauge which it's bled down pressure um so but let me turn this off but guys and then you just set it up so what um i what happened was so i got the fuel pump it was a combination of problems i was having an issue with batteries electrical issues so i was addressing that addressing the fuel injection issues of making sure the right size correct pump was on um and then just making sure pressures were good and obviously when you prime it you're going to check for leaks all that good stuff um so got that sorted out this thing fired up make sure you have that screw there is a screw like a carburetor let me see hang on you probably won't i don't know if you'll be able to see it i just had a brain fart so in here i don't know if you'll be able to see it there but there's a uh, flat uh, screwdriver head deal in there um turn that back okay um so that keeps your idle low enough so it'll reach i didn't and the thing was revving to like about oh like 3400 rpm so back that out okay so that we get the nice low idle that you want and then you can fine tune it with the touch pad i have it set right now i think at like 950 850 i don't remember i can lower that a little bit and i'm going to do that but i'm trying to get the get the car to learn itself anyway i'm babbling on anyway so when this thing fired up i would say within two minutes it was at target rpm for idle um I took the I I didn't think to take the phone with because 
whenever you do a maiden voyage, you're always eh, stuff happening, and it did. Um, some things I have to do, but what I thought with going with fuel injection, it would just help the drivability of the car. I wasn't really expecting a big performance gain. I was more looking at the drivability. <sighs> Folks, let me tell you. Wow. Okay. I had this car in third gear and I punched it just a little bit and it threw me into the seat. Okay. So um, that little 600 Holly I had on there for having for two, three years did a nice job, but wow, this thing is ridiculous. So yes, you can expect performance gains from this self tuning, uh, Holly Sniper EFI setup. Is it worth it? Yes. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, expose pitfalls I ran into with doing my swap. So that way you guys can watch this and be like, okay, well, I have this. Well, I need that. I need that. And trying to make it so you don't have the headaches that I did that with doing this swap. But yes, totally worth it. Would I do it again? Hell yeah. Um, I think we're going to be wrapping up some stuff for the season here in the C4. Um, I might have one or two videos this year yet, and I think we're going to wrap it up for a little bit. But we may, depending on the weather, we may do a, a Pagoda run yet this year just to see what how the car is different from last year. So anyway, I'm babbling on. That's it for now. And uh, like and subscribe to the channel. I want to give a big shout out to everybody who already has subscribed. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you for the comments. I appreciate it. I read the comments and uh, respond how I can. All right. So until next time, watch out for each other. Take care of each other. We'll see you next time right here on Big E's. Bye for now.